The United States, as everyone should know, was first comprised by the uniting of 13 states, which used to be the colonies of England. The United States fought England for our right to be an independent nation. Here is a map of the 13 colonies, and we declared independence in the year 1776. All the other areas in America were basically controlled by other countries. For example, a large part of the southwest of America was still part of Mexico, and areas like Missouri, Ohio, and Illinois were mostly very rural areas with not a lot of people there. It is reported that Spain controlled areas like Missouri, Ohio, and Illinois, but what is more realistic to say is that the Roman Catholic Church had missions there. And these missions were run by priests that came from Spain. Besides a few settlements, a lot of those areas were uninhabited by Americans. So after the Revolutionary War, settlers began to go westward into those areas from the 13 states. And everybody should know what settlers are. The settlers are a group of families who will go to uninhabited areas where there's nothing but forests and they begin to build houses and homesteads. So they begin to settle in an area that has almost no people. And it is very hard work to clear forests, build cabins, and then later houses, and then start hunting, trapping, and farming. So often the government will give people who are willing to do this free land if they are brave enough to take on all those endeavors. And later, once the settlements have been started, more people can move into the area and help the first settlers. And as the area becomes more inhabited, it becomes a place with actual towns and roads and municipal buildings. But the first settlers have to be an extremely tough and hardworking group of people with the ability to get everything started. So settlers from the 13 new United States began to move westward into areas now known as Missouri, Ohio, and Illinois. So the Roman Catholic Church had missions in those areas. And at first, they tried to hinder the amount of settlers moving westward because they were mostly Protestant. But the Catholic Church quickly realized that this was a stupid maneuver and almost impossible to back up. And soon, huge amounts of people were moving into those territories. And towns were developed by the 1800s in areas like Missouri. There was a lot of farming and trading, like fur trading, and inventions like the steamboat, which allowed for trade routes along the Mississippi River, which is one of the longest rivers in the world and runs past 10 states. Soon that area became very rich and successful and then territories like Missouri were asking to be admitted as states into the United States. At that time, the U.S. was divided between slave states and non-slave states and the territory called Missouri was home to a few large plantations that were run with slaves. However, an interesting note is that many if not most of the families in Missouri did not own slaves. Many were settlers from the northern states who never owned slaves. Due to the American economy and the way things had developed, there were a few large plantations. The U.S. government eventually decided on admitting Missouri as a slave state as long as it could be balanced out by admitting Maine as a non-slave state. So these territories in the north 
central part of the U.S. like Missouri, Ohio, and Illinois quickly became very valuable areas that were highly involved in the American economy. Yet, we cannot forget who stood in the shadows, very unhappy about the newly formed country of America that was doing very well to develop itself without the control of the countries that it had recently freed itself from. And that of course was England, who we just fought to become an independent nation. And the Roman Catholic Church, which had a long history of controlling the countries of Europe, so they did not like losing the 13 colonies or the 13 states of America. And now, they really did not like America growing and taking on whole new territories that were once controlled by the Roman Catholic Church through missions and some settlements. But England and the Roman Catholic Church could no longer outwardly attack the newly formed American country without receiving a lot more resistance and bad press because everyone in America would then begin to really wake up about who the world's bad guys really were. The more England and the Roman Catholic Church attacked the newly formed America, the more the English government and the Roman Catholic Church revealed themselves for what they were, tyrants and criminals that wanted to hold the world down. So at that time, the English government and the Roman Catholic Church began to offer to loan the United States government money through banks, through central banks, and a lot of people in America realized that this was a way for England to take control of America again by controlling all the money. Because if everyone in America, including the US government, owes the English government a lot of money, who do you think has control over America? The little kids who owe money or the big bad English central banks that have all the money to lend? So there was a lot of problems and political debate over that power grab where the English government used money lending tactics to secure control over America who had just fought the English for independence. Now, as the English government tried to take over the US economy through banks, the Roman Catholic Church wanted to take control over a large segment of America's people through religion. As everyone should know, the roots of the Protestants existed in those who originally protested against the Roman Catholic Church. That is why they are called Protestants. So, in America, many people were wary of the type of control the Roman Catholic Church and the kings and queens of Europe possessed and that was a main reason why we fought for independence from England because England and the Roman Catholic Church did not want to give anyone rights in Europe and they kept most people very poor. In Europe all the power and human rights were only given to the nobility and to the Roman Catholic Church. In Europe they had slaves but they called them peasants who would work on farms and then give most of their earnings to the king and to the Catholic Church. In Europe, the peasants did not have freedom of speech or freedom of press or the freedom to own land. In fact, if one of the English peasants said something that the King of England or the Catholic Church did not like, they could be kicked off their land and then burned at the stake or executed in some other terrible way. So that was why many left England to settle in America and then why so many fought for American independence and rights such as freedom of speech, freedom of press, and the right to own land and for the separation of church and state. And that is a big statement that everyone should remember, especially today. The separation of church and state meant that the Roman Catholic Church or any church should not have any sway or say over the government 
and the founders of the United States of America knew that this should be included in the philosophy of their new country because they knew how Europe had been run which was that the Catholic Church controlled the kings and queens and the kings and queens acted as a criminal and tyrannical government who hated and persecuted the populations of Europeans. So in the US, people had the freedom of religion, but the understanding that those religions cannot decide the rights of the people. Those religions cannot silence certain people because they do not like their religious beliefs. And of equal importance, religions cannot silence people for insulting or criticizing religion. Because if you are silenced in that regard, quickly, America will lose their freedom of speech and their freedom of press. If they are allowed to talk about whatever they want, except religion, they can't dare talk or criticize anyone's religion. And if that becomes an accepted practice, next, they cannot dare criticize the government because when large religions like the Roman Catholic Church or Judaism or Mormonism take over, the first thing they do is silence all of their opposition. The first thing they do is begin to take away your freedom of speech and your freedom of press. And if you study all the world's religions, you will find out the great truth which is that all of these religions, the Catholics, the Protestants, the Jews, the Mormons, the Muslims, the Buddhists, the Hindus, are all run by the same type of people who all practice the same things in secret. And that is keeping people ignorant and enslaved so that they do not really understand what is happening in the world. And all the heads of the world's religions do this for money, for control, and for power. Because at the top, all these religions are just giant corporations. They do it for the money. They are no different than any other corporation. So, at the end of the 1700s, the Roman Catholic Church knew that the people of America were already wary of them and understood what the Catholic Church did in Europe to keep people down. That is why so many of them left to the New World in America. So the Catholic Church knew that it could not start a bunch of bullshit right away with the newly formed country of America without getting a lot more negative attention, a lot more bad press. So the Catholic Church decided to start a new religion that combined Protestant Christianity with the religion of Wicca and that is almost exactly the same as Roman Catholicism which is a combination of original Christianity and pagan mythology. The Roman Empire practiced paganism and when they converted to Christianity they formed their own form of Christianity by combining their religion of paganism with the teachings of Christ and they got Roman Catholicism so in order to control the mainly Protestant populations in America they wanted to do the same thing so they formed a new Protestant Christian religion in America that functioned much like a secret society like Freemasonry so the Roman Catholic Church plotted together with the English government and began to develop what is called the Book of Mormon. And those who developed and wrote the Book of Mormon were Freemasons and Wiccans. So for those who are new to this channel, Wicca is the real name of pagan witchcraft that is practiced all throughout Europe through all the highest levels of European government and the Roman Catholic Church. And that is what the Mormon prophet Joseph Smith was. He and his family were Freemasons who practiced Wicca. And Joseph Smith went on to be the frontman or prophet of Mormonism. 